Good evening and welcome to Estuary TV News. I'm Hugh Riches. This evening I'm joined by Joe Smedley and Emma Fairhall of Red Herring Games to discuss nocturnal museums and murder most foul. And Emma Lingard will be in Hull for an unusual game of polo, the sport with a hole in the middle. But first, here's James Dunn with the headlines. <laughs> Hello, in the headlines today are damaged road markings putting lives at risk and something tasty to do this weekend. But first, an 83-year-old man has called for action on a damaged Grimsby road after coming off his mobility scooter and breaking his sternum. Former Immingham Town Councillor Vic Smith came off after being nudged by a car on an access road next to Pennell's Garden Centre last bank holiday Monday. He landed with the scooter on top of him, breaking his sternum and remains in Grimsby's hospital receiving treatment. The driver allegedly wound down her window and apologised before driving off. Luckily, three other men and two other women came to his aid. But Mr Smith thinks his, this pothole-ridden road is partially responsible for the accident. He thinks it becomes particularly dangerous when it's used as an access route to the nearby car boot sale and when the garden centre is busy. I fell in the ditch with my mobility scooter on top of me. Uh, three gentlemen and the two ladies uh, jumped in and to help me, uh, to, uh, to hold the scooter off me until the fire brigade came. Uh, it, the state of the road is abysmal. That It's as though a horde of tiger tanks are driven over it time and again it's all churned up and before long there's going to be more accidents. A 15 year old girl is in intensive care after being hit by a car near Brig on Monday. She was airlifted to Leeds General Infirmary after the collision with a blue Vauxhall Astra near Scorby Primary School at 4.44 p.m. The driver, a 43 year old woman from Hibblestow, was uninjured and police have confirmed she's not under arrest. Any witnesses are urged to contact police on 101, quoting log 446 of May the 12th. 44% of road markings on motorways in the Yorkshire and North Lincolnshire area need replacing, according to a survey by the Road Safety Markings Association. The survey was carried out between July and September last year and looked at 242 kilometres of roads in the Highways Agency's Area 12. They were measured according to their reflectivity and the association claims too many fell below the levels at which they are usually scheduled for replacement in the highway sector. National Director George Lee said the humble white line can save lives so it's important they are maintained. If it cannot be seen, lives are put at risk. Three people were arrested after armed officers were deployed to Hull's Orchid Park estate on Monday. Police attended after a member of the public reported the teenagers shooting at streetlights on Guild Lane at 11.18pm. They arrested an 18-year-old, a 17-year-old and a 16-year-old for criminal damage and recovered an air rifle at the scene. Protesters have set up a camp in Beverley to protect the area against what they claim is an imminent test frack by Canadian company Rathlin. The company have been granted mining waste permits but deny they will be fracking, which involves pumping chemicals into the earth to extract shale gas. But Richard Howarth from the Hull and East Yorkshire Frack Off campaign said the company's operations in the area is clearly fracking and could lead to hundreds of wells across the beautiful East Yorkshire countryside. The group claim they are protecting water and land from the imminent test frack. Two for a pound, ten for a fiver and fun for two weeks. North Lincolnshire Council wants people to get involved in the Love Your Local Market fortnight. They'll be throwing special events throughout the two weeks, which start today to celebrate the thriving markets in Brig, Scunthorpe and Ashby. And if you want just a sample of what's on offer, there will be children's entertainment at Scunthorpe this Saturday and live music throughout the day at Brig next Thursday. To find out more about markets in the area, email markets at northlinks.gov.uk If you're looking for something delicious to do this weekend, Normanby Hall Country Park is holding its annual food festival on Sunday. Everything from local meats and chutneys to local ales will be on offer in one of North Lincolnshire's most picturesque settings. There's plenty for kids to do with a local petting zoo, activities and craft sessions, but adults can enjoy themselves too 
I've already mentioned the local ales, but there's also a jazz band and a folk band playing throughout the day. It runs from 10.30am to 4.30pm this Sunday, and you can get tickets on the door. That's all for now. Goodbye. Hull City fans might be mortified to know that their beloved turf was desecrated the other day by a herd of horses when the Rowley Park Polo Club took over the KC Stadium for a one-off tournament. It was courtesy of Ehab Elam, a member of the club, who thought the match would be a good idea before the turf was pulled up to be relayed for the next season. Emma Lingard went to watch the action. The KC Stadium hosted a series of polo matches, which was different for the riders too who were not used to riding in a stadium this size. The atmosphere is just great. Yeah, and the acoustics in the arena, as soon as anyone shouts, you actually hear it. We're out on the big pitch, you don't, you don't yeah. hear it at all. Yeah, it's quite different to a normal game of polo when you're out on, a, on an open field, basically. So you don't have the reverberation and the, the crowds up above you on the tiered seating. And in the, in the winter time when we do arena polo, there aren't really many galleries in the arena, so uh, you don't get too many spectators. But it's a combination of the two, and it's, it's absolutely fabulous. For the teams assembled, playing on the pitch was unusual in that it wasn't as large as a polo field, which presented its own problems for some of the horses. The horses are usually, it's like hit and then chase. And so it stopped start, and a lot, it's a bit like the arena, a lot don't like it, but it was still good, still good, very slippery, but yeah, no, it was good, but it was a lot harder than on a normal uh, pitch. The main aim of the event was to show how accessible the sport is for people. Many of the team were new to the game, with some having only recently learned to ride. I've been watching all last, se last season when the club <laughs> started, and I thought, I could do some of that. <laughs> and we've got a, we've got a horse <laughs> on the horse pony that I've just been on uh, that uh, I can cope with. So I've literally just started this year. This is only my fifth time. Um, first tournament, fifth time actually on grass playing other than club chuckers. Um, so really since the last two months is all I've been, been playing. Been really Papa well, it's really Papa come Polo. on. I was the same. Um, George started riding first and I was like following on, doing all the videos, all the shots for him. Like John started standing up the side, taking all the photographs. And it went from there again. He encouraged me, why don't you have a go? Why don't you have a go? Oh, OK then. And that was it. And so now, obviously, you know, we've got both got playing. North East Lincolnshire's museums welcome a series of after dark cultural activities this week. The Museums at Night project includes music, theatre, poetry and art, as one would expect. But there will also be murder mystery at the Fishing Heritage Centre. The chief conspirators are Joe Smedley and Emma Fairhall of Red Herring Games, who join me now. Thank you very much for coming in. Hello. Uh, whereabouts and when is this murder mystery going to be taking place? It's going to be taking place at the Fishing Heritage Centre on Friday okay. the 16th. I'm right, aren't I? Friday the 16th uh, and this week. At what time? Seven o'clock. Seven o'clock, OK. And um, can you tell me anything? It's a mystery, so you can't tell me much, but who, who might be involved in this? Well, we've got all local actors are involved in it. They're going to be the suspects on the evening, and the job of the people coming is to be the detectives. They've got to try and work out what's happened, who's done it, and how it's happened. And the dead body's Mr Barry Cooder. Barry Cooder? Yes. He's the uh, second mate on board this uh, trawler. OK. And um, Emma, who else might... Which other characters have you, uh, you organised for this? Oh, who have we got coming? Um, I'm just trying to think of some names. Annette Fish. Annette Fish, um, Alexander Dock. Um, who's the apprentice John boy? Andy Size. Andy Size is the apprentice boy. John, John Dory is the skipper. Is the skipper of the ship. Um, and Harry Butt is coming along as the inspector to solve the evening for us. <laughs> Good. How many people are you expecting to come along? How many detectives do you need? As many as we can get. Um, I believe there are still some tickets left. Yeah, um, we've, we've got capacity for 180. Right. Um, so we'll just wait and see how many turn up on the night. And people can just, just, you just have to turn up, they don't have to book They have to like buy a ticket because there is a buffet. So um, the Fish and Heritage Centre would prefer people buy a ticket in order to come. Tickets, but the tickets are only £5. They are, and they're available from the Fishing Heritage Centre and also Cleethorpe Storage Information Office. Red Herring Murders, uh, Red Herring Games rather, it's a very niche business, isn't it? How long have you been organising murder mysteries? Uh, since two thousand and seven, we've been we opened in two thousand and seven. We've been running murder mysteries since then. It's a, an odd interest to have. Was it something you'd done before, and you just thought this is a good way to make a living? Uh, it's a long story. I was going to run a coffee shop, and it didn't come off. Um, <laughs> 
Yes. And then uh, I was writing Murder Mysteries for the Church anyway. Um, we were asked to write one for the church youth group and all the games you buy in the shops that we used to play, um, they involve a transvestite or a lesbian or something like that midway through the end. Also for a church, you can't have things like that. It would be totally inappropriate. So I wrote one for the church youth group I was leading at the time. Um, and that went down really well with the parents. Oh, write another one. We haven't done medieval. That would be great. So we wrote a medieval one. Right. Oh, that was fantastic. Write another one. So we wrote another one. And it just kind of grew on the back of that. We ended up with about six plots on the computer. And when I was looking to run a coffee shop and couldn't get the money, um, somebody suggested we sell them. So um, we started selling them on the internet. Uh, and then we launched our own company with the help of CPL Internet um, in 2007. And then Red Heron Games was born at that point. And you've always been an enthusiast for this, Emma? You're a natural-born detective? <laughs> I didn't think or I was. a natural-born murderer? Um, let's go for the detective. I think yeah. it's probably a better option. You've not been a murderer yet. I have haven't you? been the murderer yet. No, I haven't. I didn't think I was, actually. Jo invited us along to one at hers that we were trialling and practising and making sure it all worked, and I got really hooked in them. And I joined the company back in October last year just to look at the events side of things and manage all our corporate customers and clients. So I've not been a detective for long, but I'm getting the hang of it. Yes. And you have some uh, association with Dragon's Den. Uh, we do. We were asked to go on, actually, and compete by the BBC, and I turned them down. Um, but we were... Why did you turn them down? Oh, being on the telly. No, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Very glad you're here. Um, no, we were retweeted by Thea Pafita as part of the Small Business Sunday, um, and that meant that we got a little bit more um, coverage, if you like, on, on Twitter. Um, along with six other companies that, that week. Um, he only retweets six companies a week. There's like thousands and thousands that submit tweets to him um, between five and seven on a Sunday. It seems an obnoxious programme to me. A bunch of ingenious people turn up in a warehouse and, and some smug spivs abuse them rudely. <laughs> it, it's, it, it's Probably a good reason for Joe not it, doing it. Yeah, yeah, that was one of the reasons we didn't do it. <laughs> it, it. It's all very good. If you do a really good presentation and it looks fantastic, um, great. But if you mess up, which is the sort of thing I would do on camera, and uh, you end up <laughs> with like millions and millions of people watching, and you look like a complete idiot. Red Herring's a, a, a local business, isn't it? You're, you've, been, you've been based in uh, whereabouts are you based? Based in Grimsby, um, on Wellergate, 26 Wellergate. Um, and um, uh, how many other businesses around this area, this region, around the Humber, have, be, have had this sort of support from a Dragon's Den style uh, networking program as well? Um, well, Scrubby's Crisps. Scrubby's Crisps have, have had an SBS uh, retweet. There's um, people called Giddy Kipper as well who are near Lincoln. Um, Scrubby's Claire is the only one I know who's had a retweet in this area, but I could well be wrong about that. Um, I've just met Claire a few times, so I know she's got that retweet. Okay. Uh, and the, uh, the, the Museums at Night uh, project, uh, this, you're, you're particularly involved in the Fishing Heritage Centre on Friday mm -hmm. night, of mm -hmm. course, uh, but there are all sorts of other uh, events going on over um, uh, Thursday, Friday and, and Saturday yes, night. Yes, there are. There's lots of uh, things going on. Will you be attending any of the other uh, Museums at Night events? We'll try to, definitely. We'll I'm sure to, we will yeah. do as much as we can to support it. At the moment, our focus is on Friday evening and making sure that we can Get solve the murder of Barry Cuda. That. That's what we're... Well, Very I'll, I'll just remind you where you can be on Thursday, Friday and Saturday because there are events going on all over the mm, place. Mm. The Fishing Heritage Centre, uh, the Time Trap Museum, uh, the Town Hall. Apparently there's something going on in the police cells under the Town Hall. There is. There's somebody channelling, isn't there? That there is. There's friends, uh, well, actually, one of the actresses that's working with us on Friday is channelling spooky things from the past. Really? In one yeah. of them, yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what, so there'll be past ghosts coming through uh, very well. Uh, there'll, be ab uh, there'll be events at the Abbey, uh, the Abbey Walk Gallery, Grimsby Minster itself, yeah. and uh, also down in Caister at the Arts and Heritage Centre. Mm -hmm. So just yes. to get those points out there, Thursday, Friday and Saturday that's evenings, right. yes. Yes. museums coming alive at night. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay. That's all we have time for. Thank you very much for joining us. I hope you're... Uh, well, I mean, you're the conspirators, but I hope the culprit is caught. Yes, uh, we will make sure that he yeah. is, <laughs> or she. On Friday evening. Very good. Uh, if you, uh, that's all we have time for today. If you do have a story for us, please uh, get in touch. Email news at estuary.tv or contact us via our Twitter or Facebook pages or pick up the phone and give us a call on 01472 Until tomorrow, goodbye.